For those watching at home, I know there's sometimes issues with the video quality. I'm not quite sure how to fix it, but some people have found that if they go back in the video or they refresh the page, then it uh, will work again. So try that, but do let me know if you have issues and we'll do our best to try to fix them. Today we're having communion, so you can use anything you have at home if you want to join with us, uh, whether that's coffee and bread or juice and crackers. Uh, grab what will be meaningful for you as we do the Lord's Supper. Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. We are going to get started. Today we've been having communion, and so if you haven't grabbed one from the back, we've got the little communion cups that have two layers of plastic, and we unfold the first layer, and there's your communion bread. We'll eat that, and then you do the second one. For those watching at home, grab whatever elements for communion that you would like. And uh, uh, if you don't uh, have a chance to do it now, I am happy to come and visit you and bring the communion element to you. Just let me know. For our call to worship is printed, posted above. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Know that it is the Lord God who made us, and we are God's people. Let us give thanks to God this day, and bless God's holy name. We're going to sing number 12, Lift Up the Gates Eternal. I'm not sure if we have sung this one before. So if you read music, it might be helpful to read along. It is a Israeli folk melody, so there will be a sense of familiarity to it when you hear it. Uh, one note, though, if you're reading along, that we sing the refrain, and then verses 1 to 3 all together, then the refrain, then verses 4 and 5, refrain, uh, six and seven or or something like that so they go verses go in clumps with the refrain in between that's number 12 lift up the gates eternal
seated. Our opening prayer has a part that will be responsive, and that will be posted above. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we gather in this season of thanksgiving, struck by the colors of the leaves, the last warm breezes, birds flying south in formation. Such beauty speaks to us of your goodness and your desire to provide what each of your creatures needs. As we gather, renew our sense of gratitude for every good gift you offer us. Especially we praise you for the gift of Christ Jesus, who teaches us how to walk in the world you love and offers us grace and compassion to share with those we meet. Receive our love and gratitude in his name, and by your spirit, empower us to live gratefully each and every day. Living and loving God, we acknowledge that we enjoy life with an abundance many nations cannot imagine. Yet we confess we do not always recognize the blessings we share. We worry about our futures and ignore the present needs of those around us. Forgive us our fears and narrow vision and our failure to care for creation as you intended. The mercy of our God is from everlasting to everlasting. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ Jesus, you are forgiven and set free to begin again. At this time of thanksgiving, let us give special thanks for God's most generous love. Today is uh, Thanksgiving, and so we have so many things to be thankful for. Um, I'm just thinking, I, I've got my well, Thanksgiving dinner we're doing tomorrow night, and I've got the turkey going, um, but I haven't, I haven't got enough. The inflation and food prices have been so high, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to uh, afford all of it. It'd be wonderful if someone could give me some cash, uh, maybe if someone had a 50 a $50 bill would be wonderful. Can anyone, does anyone have anything? Oh, great, thank you. A $50 bill, Heather, that's wonderful. All right, I'll just put that in my pocket. Thank you very much. There you have a little example of gratitude. Maybe not quite enough gratitude. I don't know. If we had kids watching today, or maybe those watching at home, I imagine there being some gasps. <gasps> Heather just gave the minister money, cash, and he just put it in his pocket? Oh, we know he's taking lots of money, but we didn't think it'd be so direct. Goodness. What they didn't see online is that I had just given Heather that $50 bill a couple of seconds ago. How do you feel, Heather, about giving me that $50? Hmm? She feels good. Feels good, because it really wasn't her $50. It came from my pocket, was in her hands for a few minutes, and then went back to me. It was easy to give, because it wasn't hers to begin with. So many of the things we have in life, all the things we have in life, are given to us as a gift from God, our Creator. And we hold on to it for just a moment. There comes a time in all our lives when all our things will be given back. If we are blessed to live long enough, we will watch that process until the point where we give our lives itself. That can cause us some anxiety and stress. I don't want to give up all the things I have. But that's why it's important to remember that the things we have, even life itself, is borrowed for a moment. It's in your hands right now. You have this moment right now. But in a second, we give that on. We return to God the gifts that have been given to us. I hope that thought encourages us all to be a little more generous, 
freely giving because we know that everything is a gift itself. But I also hope it lowers anxiety, knowing that you are returning to God something that wasn't yours to begin with. Most of our pain and fear comes from trying to hold on to things that don't belong to us to begin with. Recognizing the source of all things and the source to which we will be returning helps to calm all of us and make our spirits and souls set free. In this Thanksgiving, I encourage you to reflect on all of that for which we are to be given thanks. And we'll do that saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 802, For the Fruits of All Creation. scripture lesson is Psalm 111, reading together Refrain 1.
praise the Lord. And thanks to the Lord, my whole heart, in the company of the right in the congregation. Oh, holy, holy. of the Lord studied by all who delight in them. Honor and majesty are the works of the Lord, whose righteousness endures forever, who is gained renowned by wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord provides food for the faithful, ever mindful of the covenant. The Lord has shown people works of power, giving them the heritage of the nation. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, perfect in love The works of God hands are faithful and just. They are established forever and ever. The Lord sent redemption to the people. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Gospel lesson is Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of the Lord. Let me start with the easy sermon. Jesus heals ten men of leprosy. Only one turns back to say thank you. Be the one that turns back. Say thank you. It puts out such a positive energy out there in the world, and our world needs more positive energy. Whether it's your hairdresser, or the bus driver, or the waiter, say thank you. We all like it. We've all felt the way Jesus has felt. We're not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Only one person said thank you? You cooked and cleaned and no one cared. You went out of your way to help and they didn't notice. You don't need accolades, but it can't. they can't afford one measly thank you doesn't hurt, does it? But instead of moping that the world doesn't say thank you enough, why don't you be the person to say thank you first? Get the trend going. Be exuberant and excessive in your thank yous. Think of one person right now 
Who could do with an extra thanks from you? I know the moments passed. The dinner is already long digested. Financial aid was given years ago. The kids are all grown up. Whatever it was, you owe thanks on. It is never too late to give it. Turn back the way that this man with leprosy did. Make the extra effort and you will brighten someone's heart. If someone from your past unexpectedly said thank you to you, how would you feel? A little thanks could change your whole day, maybe your whole week. Maybe you say thank you just at the moment when the other person is feeling the most discouraged. Maybe it makes them take a deep breath and realize their life mattered more than they thought. What power is in your hands already? Use it wisely. Say thank you. Not only is it good and healing for the other person, but saying thank you is healing for you too. The practice of gratitude has, in my opinion, the single greatest impact on your spiritual and mental health. Maybe getting into the habit of prayer can be hard for you. Maybe you struggle with reading your Bible. Maybe you can never make it out to church. If you can't do any of those things, at least just practice saying thank you more often. That alone is going to bring you closer to God. The more we practice saying thank you, the more we realize how blessed we are, how everything is a gift, how lucky we are to be right here in this moment now. Gratitude is a spiritual medication that can be used to heal anxiety, misery, existential despair. If you're going through a hard time, practicing more gratitude can be as healthy for you as going for a walk or changing your diet. When everything seems to be going wrong, stop and take a moment to say thanks for everything that's going right. Your eyesight, your knees, your breath, your ability to think about things to complain about. Not everyone has all those things. But if you have even one of them, you have much to say thanks for. Gratitude won't solve all of your problems, but it will calm your heart enough that you won't be overwhelmed by those problems. Gratitude is so powerful. It changes the world and it changes you. So be like the leper who turned around and say thanks. Here ends the easy sermon. I want to dig a little deeper into the scripture text that we have today. One man with leprosy said thank you. But were the other nine really ungrateful? Did they not care that they had just been healed? Jesus sends them to a priest, and even before they arrive, they start to notice that their bodies are feeling better. The feeling comes back to their nerves and extremities. They start moving their fingers again, or maybe their fingers grow back. Maybe leprosy is just simply uh, stopped, or their bodies restored entirely. We don't know the nature of this healing. But I know they're standing a bit taller and breathing deeper, and they know they've been healed. Do the other nine just shrug their shoulders and say, Ah, oh, that's not bad, and move on with their day? I can't believe that. This moment is too amazing, especially when you consider what the people with leprosy had been going through. Leprosy, otherwise known as Hansen's disease, had a high social stigma. It's not highly contagious, but it horribly disfigures people affected with it. It looks terrible and must feel worse. And that made people with leprosy social outcasts. No one wanted to get close to someone with leprosy. And that's probably why these ten men were together by themselves. They've been separated from their communities, from their families, from everyone. It's bad enough to be sick, but to be sick alone? 
We saw in the pandemic how uniquely painful that is. No wonder they cry out to Jesus, have mercy on us. I don't think that was a statement of faith. I think they cried out that same thing to everyone who walked by. Sir, madam, have mercy on us. Jesus didn't say to them, I will heal you. No, he simply said, go and show yourselves to the priests. Now, these men had been on the streets calling out to anyone who will listen, have mercy on us. I'm sure they heard a lot of people say, oh, go away, or bother someone else. If you need help, go to the priest, not me. I wonder how they heard Jesus. Was his tone received as helpful or dismissive? Go, show yourselves to the priests. Or, go, show yourselves to the priests. I'm sure Jesus was being kind, but that doesn't mean they heard it that way. Jesus' words would have been tossed in with all the other things people had been yelling at them that day. Still, they got up and went. They weren't going to stay there all day anyways. And as they go, the leprosy is healed. I don't know if they knew why or how they were healed. They'd be in shock. Now, if you were healed miraculously from a disease that kept you away from your family, what's the first thing you're going to do? Your case of COVID clears up and you're released from isolation in the hospital. Do you barge back into the ICU to say thank you? Or do you rush home to see your loved ones? I think these nine men with leprosy all went home to their families. Wouldn't you? You'd be too excited, like a child getting a present that they really, really love. You'd rush off with it, run to your family, hug your parents or your kids, yell down the street, I'm healed, I'm healed. What a wonderful day it was for them. But one of them doesn't go to his family. One of them doesn't run off. One turns around. Why? Why is this one different? The Gospels say that the one man who turned around was a Samaritan, a foreigner. He didn't belong there. We don't know how he got there. Why was this Samaritan with a group of nine other Jews? The only thing he had in common with them was the leprosy. And now, without the leprosy to tie them together, he was alone. I assume, because Jesus points him out to be a foreigner, that he probably didn't have family in that area. His family would have been all back in Samaria. He didn't have anyone else to run off to, no one else to hug and celebrate with. His body was cured, but not his isolation. And this is what makes him different. And this difference is why he could see what others missed. It helped him to notice the presence of God when everyone else was busy running back to their old lives. You know, when you're healthy, we take for granted our health. No one pays any attention to their hips until the moment that they start hurting. You don't give a second thought about your appendix until it bursts, and you never appreciate how wonderful it is to breathe through your nostrils until you're congested. In the same way, those of us who are somehow different see different things that we need to be grateful for. If you, in any way, don't fit in with the people around you, you see the world from a different perspective which means that you can see the presence of God, the gifts of God, in places and in moments that the rest of us overlook. Depending what country they come from, a newcomer to Canada might point out how safe they feel, or how wide the landscape is, or how refreshing the rule of law can be. Those are things that I pay no attention to because I'm used to them. 
I've never lived under the threat of gun violence, so I don't appreciate what a relief it is to be freed from that anxiety. It doesn't occur to me to be grateful for government officials that don't accept bribes, or to see a prairie horizon and think, this is gorgeous. Our country abounds in blessings and gifts that us old Canadians don't see as well until a new Canadian points it out. Or I think of the transgender friends I have and the joy they feel when they can finally wear the right clothing that reflects their gender. I personally don't care about clothes. I toss on rags from the thrift store and dash out of the house. And I've never stopped to say thank you for the ability to shave, especially if I'm shaving my back. But to a trans guy who chooses hormone therapy, each wandering and sprouting hair follicle is a thing to celebrate. I've taken for granted the comfort I feel in my gender identity. Never crossed my mind to turn around and say thank you for it. What other things are we forgetting to say thank you for? If you get pulled over by a cop car and never worry about your safety, you have something to be thankful for. If you can walk down the street comfortably hand in hand with the person you love, you have something to be thankful for. If you can read the emotions of a room and understand why everyone is laughing, you have something to be thankful for. If you can live where you want, change jobs when you want, practice the religion you believe in, you have something to be thankful for. We are so busy with day-to-day -day life that we don't think about these things. And because we grew up with these gifts, because we're so accustomed to them, they become almost impossible to see. Sometimes it takes an outsider, like this Samaritan, to point out what it is we're missing, to stop, turn us around and say, look, here is the presence of God. As you're making your list of things to be grateful for this Thanksgiving, I invite you to consider the things that we're overlooking. What ways has God blessed you that you've never even considered before? Think of the Samaritans in your life. The folks are just a little bit different from you. What things do they point out? What are they thankful for? Find that and you'll find something you have in common with them. Another reason to stop and praise the God who made you. Praise the Son who heals you. Praise the Spirit who keeps us breathing. And in the same way, maybe you're the one that's a little bit different. Maybe you're like the Samaritan in this story. You see something in our world that others have been taking for granted. You see reasons to rejoice in God when others are despairing. You have good news. So share it. Give thanks. Rejoice. It is a gift to be able to point out more of God's gifts. Let others see your gratitude and God's hope is going to shine right through you. Let's all give more thanks and praise to God. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able and we will respond together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll sing now number 534, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly.